Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. Where today we study what? We study the last topic of the course. This has been an interesting course so far, right? And the last topic is even more interesting. Most people think of it to be the most difficult topic, but this is the most important topic. And after studying this with me, inshallah, you will see that this is one of the easiest topics. And what is that? So we've already seen it by the heading of the video is what it is the power factor. So today we are going to study the power factor which is a very important thing in the power system analysis or power system operation when we are talking about. So power factor is a thing that plays a very important role. Now if I ask you, so what is power factor? So how will you define it? Yes, how will you define it? So please pause the video right, right in the comment section. How do you define power factor? So anyways, so till now you were defining it as what it is the it is the, 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 the what the cause of the angle between the voltage and the current. So no, just let it go, let it go. That definition is for kids. That is not for engineers, not for people studying engineering. You do not have to define it like that, right? Yes, kids define it like that. That is a definition, but once again, I'm telling you that is for, for what? For, for only pure sinusoidal waves when current and voltage are both sinusoidal. When they're not, you cannot define it like that. So kids define it that way. Engineering students should say what? This is a multiplying factor. This is a simple multiplying factor. This is a rating factor. This is a rating factor, which does what? Which is helpful in rating the equipments transformers, machines, etc. Right? Yes. This is a rating factor. A simple multiplication factor with a maximum value of 1, minimum of 0. Why? You know. Or we'll see. So, there are two things basically. One is the apparent uh, a rating or the apparent power and the other is the real power or the real thing so basically there is rating and capability the real thing so you have what you have one is the rating and the other one is the capability now what is the difference what is the difference so rating is the thing that you see that is the apparent thing the apparent thing that looks that seems to be the apparent thing that seems to be but the capability is what that is the actual what is the actual value now people most teachers you can say all the teachers explain it through the example of a, of a cold drink so you put a cold drink in a glass of water what do you have is the bubbles come up you see that the glass is filled but it's not after some time, the bubbles sit down and the actual amount of cold drink left is very small. Apparently, you saw that the glass was full. That apparent thing that you saw, the full glass, is the rating. Is the rating of the equipment. That you are seeing that it's apparently full. But the actual cold drink is over there is left is very small. That is the actual thing is the capability. Right? Yes. And the bubbles that are gone off, that is the reactive power that we'll see. Right? So this is the difference between. Now, for example, I say a hundred kilowatt, a hundred kVA transformer. Now the rating of the transformer would be in kVA. That we are apparently seeing the actual thing we do not know the actual thing is defined by the power factor 100 kva so you would be saying that it could take 100 kilowatt of a load but that would be when when the power factor is unity which means at unity power factor a 100 kva transformer can take a load of a 100 kilowatt without being overloaded but if you reduce the power factor to 0 
So 100 is the rating. 100 divided by 0.8 will give you 80, which means the 100 kVA transformer at a 0.8 power factor can now take a maximum load of 80 kilowatts. So this is, I'm telling you, is the rating factor, is the multiplying factor, which is making the difference between what? Which is making the difference in, uh, due to the power factor, in the rating and the capability. So rating, I would say, for example, is what? For example, I say 100 kVA transformer. And the actual is what? It is taking 100 kilowatt load. 100 kilowatt load but when at unity power factor when this multiplication factor is 1 but if the power factor is but if power factor is equal to 0 0.8 so 100 divided by 0 0.8 this gives you 80 kilowatts of load now it could take now at 0.8 power factor if you put a hundred kilowatt of load of the transformer of 100 kVA this would be 20% overload right yes so this is some simple things and again you can define it as well in that particular way also that cause of phi cause of phi is what cause of phi is 0 0.8 which means the cause of the angle between the voltage and the current is called the power factor remember for this definition the both the current and the voltage has to be pure sinusoids whereas over here the power factor is defined by the actual power the apparent power to the actual power or what where is it actual to apparent right actual power to the apparent power yes so the power factor basically is the actual power to the apparent power which means what which means that the kilowatts divided by the kvs now the power is basically complex quantity s we represent the apparent power is s the real power or the actual power is p in kilowatts and then the reactive component that bubbles that flew away. we don't have to do anything with that that is important for the system that basically defines the quality of the system that is q that is called the reactive power q and it is measured in kvars so basically where does the power factor come into play so the power factor comes into play in the ac circuits in dc circuits we do not talk about the power factors why because over there the kvas are equal to the kilowatts and in ac circuits it's because of the nature of the load so we've got three types of loads resistive inductive and capacitive yes yes so let's you know get into it let's get into it the reactive power when the reactive power comes into play the power factor does not remain unity let's say we talk from the basics let's say we talk from the basics you have what you have a voltage reference voltage is your reference you have a current flowing it is an inductive circuit basically the loads are inductive either purely resistive or you know they could be inductive right so the current would lag the voltage the current would lag the voltage let me try it till here this is the current i and this would lag the voltage by some angle phi purely inductive 90 degrees so if you resolve this into two components so the one would be the projection over here this would be i cause of phi and then the other projection is this one on the y-axis which is i sine of phi right so this i cause of phi this is the actual component or the watful component right yes the i cause of phi would be in phase with v and i sine of phi would lead it by 90 degrees 
right yes so i cos of phi is the active or it is the wattful component i cos of phi is what is the active component or it is called the wattful component whereas the i sine of phi is what this is called the reactive component or or the wattless component this is called the reactive component or this is called the watt less component this i sin of phi is the measure of power factor because if this component was not present so we would not have any deviation the current would be in phase with the voltage we would don't have an angle we would not have a power factor right yes if this is small the phase angle is small and hence the power factor would be high yes and therefore a circuit having small reactive current will have high power factor power factor cannot be more than unity because cos of phi cannot be more than unity this angle cannot be more than 90 so 0 to 1 the power factor would range now a usual practice is to attach the word of lagging or leading with the power factor. When you're defining a power factor, you say cos of phi is 0 0.8, the power factor is 0 0.8. So you have to say that this is lagging or this is lagging. Right? Yes. To signify whether the current leads or lags the voltage. Right? Yes. So basically you say what? You say that the power factor is lagging. The power factor is lagging. Uh, wait, I will just come to this. I will just come to this. Let's say I talk about the power triangle first. Let's say I talk about the power triangle first. So this was the current triangle. This is your I, right? Now if I multiply this triangle with a V, what do you have is? So this is important now. This is called what? This is called the power triangle. Now this is important. Have a look. This one is V I cos of phi. This one is the real power or the actual power. This one is P. That is consumed in the circuit. This one is the V I which is what which is s which is the apparent power we see from the rating of the equipment whereas the perpendicular the perpendicular is what this is the reactive component which is called q and this is v i sine of phi right yes so p is the actual power is in what p is in kilowatts S is the apparent power is in volt amperes KVAs and Q is the reactive component which is in KVARs right yes and the angle over here is phi which is the power factor angle which is the power factor angle so what do you have is from here you can see that S squared S is equal to, you could say, first of all, S P plus minus J Q. Now, if it is a plus Q, plus Q indicates what? That this is an inductive load. And for inductive load, what do you have? You have the current would be lagging. The current would be lagging. So, which means you would say that you have lagging VARs. You have lagging wars. And correspondingly, if you have lagging wars, you say that your power factor is lagging. You have lagging power factor. So for inductive load, you have a plus Q and you have what? You have lagging wars and the power factor is lagging. Similarly, if you have a minus Q, you have a capacitive load. And for here, you have leading wars for this. And for this, if you have leading wars, so you, 
you would say that you have your power factor which is leading. Right? Yes. Now, for the magnitude of S, you would see that S is equal to P squared plus Q squared under the root. P squared plus Q squared under the root from the Pythagoras theorem. Now, now what do you have? Power factor if you are defining from here. So the power factor is what? It is the actual power to the apparent power. Which means what? Kilowatts divided by KVAs. Which is P divided by S. And this is also equal to cause of the angle between the two. Cause of phi. Right? Yes. A general definition without any waveform is this one. Kilowatt divided by KVA. The lagging reactive power is responsible for the low power factor. It is clear for the power triangle that smaller the reactive component, the higher is the power factor of the system. Right? Yes. For leading component, the power triangle becomes reversed. This fact provides the key to the power factor improvement. Now you could see that the lagging, lagging KVAR is basically responsible for, for deteriorating the power factor. So if you have to improve the power factor, you have to provide some extra leading KVRs into the system so that the, that it gets balanced. We'll see that. We'll see that. Okay. Power factor is also equal to R upon Z, which is the resistance upon impedance. Power factor is also equal to the resistance upon impedance. That is, it is equal to R upon Z. How is that? So basically you have I squared R, P, I squared R, S for I squared Z, I squared, I squared cancel R upon Z. Right? Yes. The reactive power is neither consumed in the circuit, nor does it do useful work. It merely flows back and forth in the circuit. A watt meter does not measure reactive power. So what do they say? That the reactive power does not do any useful work. Neither is of any importance. It just flows back and forth in the circuit. Right. Yes. It is a measure of the interchange of energy. It is a measure of the quality of energy. Q is measure of the quality of the energy. Measure of quality of the energy. So how is that? So basically if your Q is small, so the QVA rating would approach the kilowatt loading. So which means it could take, equipment could take more load if Q is small. So this means what? This is a good quality energy. Similarly, if the Q is greater, so the KVA rating would deteriorate with the kilowatt loading would be small in that kilo, KVA rating. So the power quality is not good. Is that fine? It is. The reactive power, whenever the reactive power Q comes into play, so the power factor does not remain unity. The power factor does not remain unity. When? When the Q comes into play, of course. This defines the power quality or the quality of energy. So if Q is equal to zero, you have the best quality power and I told you, Q is equal to 0 implies what? You have the best quality power. And why is that? So the equipment rating is fully utilized and the loading on this could be done to the maximum level of its KVA rate. Right? Yes. When Q is having a finite value, so the quality is not excellent. You have inductive effect. Less the Q good it is. Right? Yes. Yes. So, I believe I should finish this over here. I've taken quite a lot of time. I've taken quite a lot of time. 
S is equal to V I conjugate. S is equal to V I conjugate. You also have to remember this formula. Now these are some basic circuit analysis things. Why this conjugate? So just to put this in the proper order. To, to give it a proper shape. Over here you could also have got confused over here. Plus Q should have been upward but this is downward. Minus Q should have been up downward but this I am talking about leading upward. For capacitive loads. So these are due to the S is equal to VI conjugate. Right? Yes. Now from here you could see that cos of the theta. You just can have some relations over here. That cos of phi is what? It's P upon S. Curly brown hair. P by S. Sine of theta. Sum people have people have q upon s this is how we remember it through proper brushing proper brushing q upon p q upon p so these are some important relations you could say right yes yes so i will finish this over here from here you could see if you required things you could see from here p is equal to s cos of phi from here q is equal to s sine of phi and from here q is equal to p tangent of phi yes yes so i should do what i should just finish this video over here I should just finish this video over here. You have got an illustration over here is, let us illustrate the power relations in the AT circuit with an example. Suppose that a circuit draws a current of 10 ampere at a voltage of 200 volts. Suppose that a, a circuit is drawing, let's say I just write over here as an example, is 10 amperes at 200 volts and a power factor of 0.8 lag. Then the apparent power would be what? The apparent power is S. It would be V into I directly. So this would be 200 it is? Yes. So it would be 2000 volt ampere simply. Then the P, the P which is the real power would be VI cos of phi. So which means 20 multiply 100 multiply 0.8. This would be 1600 watts. 1600 watts. So have a look. From here you could see that the rating of the equipment, the capability, the, 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 the rating or the apparent that you are seeing is a 2000. But you could put on, on it is what? You can put on is 1600. And why has that reduced? Why can I not operate it to the maximum limit? Is because of the 0.8 power factor the more power factor the more the loading would approach the rating of the equipment right yes the maximum value of power factor is unity which is the best so the reactive power q this would be vi sine of phi so 20 multiply 100 multiply sine of phi would be 0.6 for this angle and this comes out to be 1200 watts this comes out to be 1200 watts. S is equal to P squared plus Q squared under the root 10. The circuit, listen to this. The circuit receives an apparent power of 2000 and is able to convert only 16000 into active power. The reactive, that is 1200, is is the reactive wars and it does not do useful work it merely flows into and out of the circuit periodically in fact the reactive power is the liability on the source because source has to apply supply additional current that is i sine of phi so this is basically just an extra component you would say this is just an extra component which is not doing any useful work. This is just making the source to provide this extra part of the current. That is I sine of phi.
so anyways i hope that this is clear the most important thing is this power triangle p is the base s is the hypotenuse q is the perpendicular and this was all about power factor this was all about power factor i will see you in the next video maybe with an example so till then take care of yourself everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye